gamers, gals, and my non-binary pals. Welcome to Miss Kobayashi's deck profile, and here we have Dragon Maids. So, brief history lesson. Dragon Maids was released in Mystic Fighters, a side set that included three of the worst archetypes of all time, including itself. Dragon Maid, Generator, and Math Mech. So Dragon Maid's gimmick was that they had small dragon forms, who were Dragon Maids, who would be able to tag out in the battle phase into their larger dragon counterparts and then tag back into their smaller form at the end of the battle phase and sort of get a nice little like resource battle loop. Uh, this ended up being awful because of a multitude of reasons, but basically their normal summon was extremely weak and it was only able to gain access to the large dragons. Additionally, what do you end on? You cannot end on a single card and their fusion spell, Dragon Maid Changeover, would only allow you to go into House Dragon Maid, which has no quick effect, and its only effect was that if a dragon monster you control returned to your hand, you could target a monster your opponent controls and destroy it. This was terrible. It had no extension tools, and anyone trying to play Dragon Maid was basically just trying to play Dragon Link, but like a million times worse. And this deck was laughed out of the community, until Eternity Code, where they released this, Chamber Dragon Maid, where it differs from cards like Parlor or Kitchen, where they're focusing on the big dragons and getting access to them, Chamber Dragon Maid focuses on the spells and traps, and they got some really good ones. They got Night Dragon Maid Tiding, well I guess they only got one good one, but anyways, Dragon Maid Tiding allows you to target a dragon monster you control and a card your opponent controls, or is in their graveyard, and bounce them to the hand. And Compulse is really fucking good when you consider how many decks cannot really play through one specific type of interruption in this type of form. Obviously, just a Compulse wouldn't be good enough, but when you've got Spheres in Compulse, that's when things start getting a little bit hairy. Literally, when Tidying Spheres was on the board, I think it had an 87% win, win rate during Virtual World format. That's how good it was. So yeah, we are playing a deck that sort of really emphasizes on just trying to loop this sort of interaction of just keep bouncing our opponent's board, summon big boss monsters, and choke the life force out of them. So let's just get straight into it. We've got three Black Metal Dragon. Black Metal Dragon is our best non-Dragon Made Normal Summon because it allows us to get into Red is Darkness Metal, which can obviously revive the Black Metal or special out something like a Chamber or Parlor if we want to search or Foolish something specific and then just link those two into the Heavenly Spheres. Really good stuff. Next we have our Dragon Maid Normal Summons. Three Parlor Dragon Maid and three Chamber Dragon Maid. Parlor Dragon Maid is able to act as a Foolish Burial for, say, Dragon Maid Tiding in case we want to make a one card Spheres, or something like Lore Par if we want the Big Dragon, or Changeover if you want access to the, to the Fusion spell. Ch Ch Chamber Dragon Maid, it adds a spell or trap. We can add Hospitality if we want to make Spheres. We can add the other stuff if we want our opponent to cry. Next we have our large dragon maids. We have the Ernest, who can special summon a dragon from our hand for free, but you know, we have to discard it, which kinda sucks. And one dragon maid lore par, which is a really bad effect Valor on our turn only. Then we have our spell and trap lineup for our dragon maids specifically. We got two dragon maid hospitality. This card is super searchable, and we don't really want to play it at three because it's bricky. We're playing two dragon maid changeover. It gets a little bricky at two, but not enough that you'll really notice it. And the reason why I play 2 is because if you get, like, negated and banished, if this card gets banished in any way, shape, or form, you will cry. You do not have a way to go into your main fusion boss monsters, and you're just going to be like a fish out of water. So I play 2 just in case of cards like DD Crow or Nesh all Aerial. Then obviously we have our 3 Dragon Maid Tidying. Compulse is really, really broken when it's searchable every single turn. And this, Dragon Maid Downtime. This was one of the original support releases, and it was really bad. However, I believe that this card actually has a ton of untapped potential in the control build specifically. Basically it has two effects, you can target one Dragon Maid monster you control and then activate once one of these effects. Both effects bounce it, and you can either add a Dragon Maid card from your deck to your hand, or you can return a spell or trap your opponent controls to the hand. This becomes absolutely insane when you consider decks like Eldritch and Master Duel have just like 50 floodgates or you could maybe bounce things like Tenki, you could maybe bounce things like Field Spells. Dragon Maid Downtime is just absolutely insane, and when you establish a downtime lock, you cannot lose a back row matchup. I think it is just that insane. 
hand trap lineup. We've got three Valor, three Ash Blossom, three Maxi, one Nibiru. Welcome to Master Duel, baby. Holy shit, you're gonna get you're gonna get real sick of me seeing these ten hand traps. Anyways, for consistency, we've got three copies of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, we could play Extravagance, but I hate banishing all of my Dragon Maid boss monsters, which is really really frustrating whenever that happens. Honestly, you need the multiples over the course of a longer game. And three World Legacy Guard Dragon as our extension tool. Then, just as a generic uh, sort of, you know, counter trap, we're playing three Solemn Strike. This can honestly be anything. I recommend cards like Ice Dragon Prison or even more hand traps if you really want to go down that route. Or maybe blind going second card, such as Lightning Storm or Droplet. Uh, I'm just trying to play a very, very vanilla build, so just take this as a skeleton. Solemn Strike, very cool card. And then we're playing one Nurse. The reason why we're only playing one Nurse is because Nurse doesn't do anything on her own. She is mainly a target to special off of our Heratic Spheres of the Heavenly Spheres. Because Nurse Dragon Maid is a Reborn. And usually when we go Spheres, we're going to summon out our Nurse. Nurse is going to bring back like a Chamber or a Parlor. We're going to get additional adds and we've got two bodies protecting our guys. It's going to be really, really powerful stuff. So, let's get into the extra deck. We're playing two House Dragon Maid and two Dragon Maid Xiao. You can arguably cut one of these because they tag out to each other in continuously, but obviously if something gets like negated or destroyed, that's when things start getting iffy. Dragon Maid Xiao obviously has the revive effect, so ending on her and being able to revive something like a Chamber in defense mode is really, really nice stuff. Next, we got three Pisty, two Striker Dragon. These are basically just Link 1s that you can send your Dragon Maids to get them into the graveyard that don't really have any confliction. You can play our small rocket engine if you're into that, but I am not, so fuck that. Next, we're on three Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. This card is absolutely broken. Once per turn, while it's in the extra monster zone, you can tribute a monster from your hand or field, and you can bounce any face-up card to the owner's hand. This includes your own card, so if you want to bounce stuff like your own World Legacy Guard Dragon, you're absolutely able to. And then, while it's if this card gets tributed, you can special summon any dragon from your hand or deck, but reduce its stats to zero, and that's basically it. So obviously you're summoning, usually most of the time, Nurse Dragon Maid to go revive something like a chamber or a parlor. Additionally, if you really want to, you can play Fallen of Albaz in your extra deck, as well as something like Titanoclad or Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon in order to have another form of disruption on your opponent's turn to act as a sort of super poly if you want to think of it like that. But note that it does cut off a lot of your resource plays and you better be well set up in both the hand and grave if you really want to play this sort of package. I only really played it because Dragoon was really popular at the time, so just keep that in mind. Next we got one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Unicorn, just sort of generic back row removal, and one Boral Sword Dragon. You're not really going to be able to boost your access code as high as you're able to, and you don't really have an issue with removing cards because you're playing a control dragon maid build, and Boral Sword usually is just a little bit easier to go into in this specific sort of deck. So let's just hop straight into a match, and I'm going to give you guys the play-by-play -play about how this deck should function. So we're going to be playing a match against Eldlich. You can look at our hand and see that we've opened the black metal and chamber combo, so we're just going to be normal summoning black, linking that off into Striker Dragon. This is going to be able to trigger our black metal dragon in order to special out the red eyes darkness metal dragon. Now you may be wondering how we're specialing it, we're just going to banish the Striker Dragon, and then we're going to be using the metal dragon to special summon chamber from hand instead of black. So we're able to get the search, and then ultimately end on the greatest board in the history of the LCS, Heratix, Fields, and tidy. I don't know how I fucked that up. And yeah, this is basically going to be your board 90% of the time. Just spheres, tidying, and maybe a hand trap or two. So, our opponent's going to lead with the Pot of Extravagance, not a whole lot we could do, but they're going to go for the Curse Eldland. I really don't want them to be able to search the Eldlich, so we're just going to go ahead and bounce that to negate it, because if they Eldlich us, that completely turns off our Heratic Sphere line, as well as our tidying, which could get really rough. We're going to spheres, bring out Nurse, Nurse is going to bring back our Chamber, and then we're going to go Chamber Search Downtime, because obviously if they're playing Eldritch cards, we're going to be wanting to able to bounce those back and set up the Downtime loop. They're going to set four pass as well as put Eldland on the board for some godforsaken reason. Standby phase main, we're going to normal summon a Chamber Dragon Maid. In this sort of scenario, I kind of want to just establish a Xiao as fast as humanly possible. 
So yeah, they're gonna chain Imperial Order, but it doesn't really matter, because guess what? We've got Dragon Maid Tidying. We're gonna be able to bounce our nurse back to hand for follow-up plays and get that Imperial Order out of the board. They're gonna chain Rivalry of the Warlords, which is completely fine with us, because literally every single card in our deck outside of Nibiru that summons is a dragon, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, we're gonna go straight into Shiel by using the lower part in Chamber Dragon Maid. And yeah, Shio's gonna hit the board. I just kinda wanna prevent any errant back row. They're gonna activate Walkero in order to chump block. At the start of the battle phase, we're going to tag Chamber Dragon Mate out for Lorepar. Lorepar is gonna run over the Huakero. They're gonna go for the Scarlet Sanguine, and we're gonna change Shio, because I don't want them getting any access to Eldritch again. Cutting Eldritch off of their main boss monster is extremely critical. So we're just gonna go into a house, and we're just gonna get in for a fatty 3k. Main phase two, we're just gonna set two pass. Uh, not a whole lot we can really say about this. Unfortunately, we don't have the additional tidying, but we do have the downtime loop. They're gonna go for the Cursed Eldland, and we're gonna go for downtime just to basically negate it. They're going to chain Elixir of the Scarlet Sanguine, probably just set a Conquistador. I don't actually know what they're gonna send because it's been like 10 minutes since I saw this replay. They're gonna set Conquistador. We're gonna downtime, bounce the Eldland. Because Eldland is a continuous spell, it's gonna negate it. And they're gonna go for the Pot of Prosperity. They're really digging to find their Eldritch. And unfortunately for us, they reveal six trap cards. God damn it, I fucking hate this now. Eldritch in best of one formats is just so oppressively annoying because of what you are unable to really respond to these stupid floodgates. They're gonna add Tikaboo, which is really interesting when you consider Eldritch kinda loses to Tikaboo. Because guess what? All their trap monsters are, you know. Whatever. We're gonna tidying in the we're gonna tidying banish itself in the end phase, a special summon nurse from hand, nurse is gonna bring the chamber dragon maid and is gonna search the tidying. We're, they're gonna chain the Tikaboo and we're gonna chain the downtime to bounce our house dragon maid in the standby phase. Unfortunately we will not get the revive effect, but we are going to be able to get rid of the Tikaboo so we can continue our plays. We're gonna normal summon the chamber dragon maid. I don't really know what we're searching, we're just gonna search the hospitality since we already have access to everything. We're just gonna bounce it back with the changeover engrave, but they're gonna flip the vanities. Again, really questionable picks from the Eldritch player, considering that their deck kind of relies on special summoning trap monsters. We're just gonna swing in for a nice 400. We're gonna set our hand so we don't have to discard for hand size. Arguably, we could have discarded lore par, but whatever. They're going to set something. Uh, they're gonna set a trap monster, but again, that card is completely dead, and they just have to pass. During the standby, during the draw phase, we're just going to go standby main and straight into the battle phase after summoning a chamber dragon maid. But unfortunately, that does trigger the solemn judgment and it does trigger the vanities. We're gonna go for the dragon maid downtime to try and bounce something else on their board, just so we don't really have to contend with it, because we 100% have the extension in the dragon maid change over. They're gonna chain elixir, and we're just gonna chain maxi because might as well just get the trade in. So, Maxi is going to resolve, and then they're going to be able to get their special off of the Scarlet Sanguine. That's going to net us a draw, and then by the end of this, we should be able to get something on the board. With cards such as the Hospitality follow-up, as well as the Tidying, I'm really not feeling too worried about how this whole game's going to go. So, Shia is going to be hitting the board. We're just going to hit the Tidying, because we honestly just do not care. We're just clicking buttons. They're going to chain... Conquistador, and we're gonna change Xiao. This is where uh, bounce interactions and rulings really come up into place, because Tidying doesn't have to bounce both to hit and for the cost. It only has to target two of them. So even if one of them leaves the field, the other card still gets bounced. So this is why stuff like Seal's Tidying is so powerful. And because of that interaction, we're able to summon House and clean up the game. So let's go over some pros and cons. One, the deck is very, very consistent. You've got nine normal summons, you've got so many ways to find those normal summons, and the combo pieces you really need are very few and far between. All you need is like a couple back row and a normal summon, and basically you're gonna be off to the races and being able to consistently find answers to your opponent's plays. Two, the deck has a really unique gimmick in this form of its interruption. A lot of decks might be able to end on the gates, or maybe like sends or multiple like monster and spell and trap negates. This is a deck that revolves around bouncing. And a lot of cards, although they might resist destruction, they don't resist spinning. And this deck is just extremely good at being able to do stuff like that. 
in the form of spheres and obviously tidying. And three, the deck is extremely sticky. If you give this deck an inch, it will take a mile. There is no turn three against Dragon Maid. If you stall for just one turn against Dragon Maid and you don't try and interrupt their plays, they will kill you. Not maybe by OTK, but they will kill you in terms of resources. Very similarly to how decks like Subterra are able to, if you just give it like a turn. They will just accumulate so much, so many resources, so many ways to out-resource you, so many interruptions that it is just impossible to play. And the cons. One, it's not amazing into very, very heavy combo decks. Very, very heavy combo decks, stuff like Drytron and Ad Emancipator, you need multiple forms of responses. You need about three to four pieces in particular, and although some hands might lose to just a singular piece, such as Normal Summon Doki, and you just bounce that motherfucker as soon as it hits the board, unfortunately, decks like Drytron and better Ad Emancipator hands are just able to play through those boards a bit more easily than, say, more mid-range decks, such as Salamangre. Two, the deck has a pretty low power ceiling. Although the gameplay is consistent and powerful, this is as high as it'll ever get. The absolute best you're gonna be able to end on is like Xiao, Seals, and like two back row, which is extremely powerful in itself. But when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, where decks like Ad Emancipator are setting up three negates, a spin, an extra deck locking you, and a generic Omni negate, that's a pretty big power disparity. And three, this deck is expensive. Like holy shit, do you see do you see those ultra rares? Like fuck. Like three spheres. Holy shit. Overall, I'd say if you're a fan of dragons or Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, I would be very, very invested into trying to build this deck, if you have the resources, of course. Mostly the main deck is just generic staples. The extra deck, however, can be a bit pricey. But overall, if you want to play a nice, fun control deck with a little bit of flavor twist that isn't, you know, set by pass, I would really recommend Dragon Maids. That's gonna be it. See ya.